Methionine metabolism is kind of complicated as we study it coming from aspartic acid. The breakdown of methionine actually overlaps with cysteine metabolism, as we've uh, briefly seen. The complicated synthesis that comes from aspartate, however, I show here with a set of arrows. Now, in the other set of lectures where I've talked about vitamin B12 metabolism, I actually showed those seven reactions, so I'm not going to show them again here. But suffice it to say that there are seven chemical steps that occur. It's a phosphorylation, an oxidation that accompanies a dephosphorylation, another oxidation that occurs. This process creates homoserine. Homoserine, we remember, was an intermediate in the synthesis of the cysteine from methionine. Succinylation involves the addition of a succinate molecule. The cysteine is replacing the succinate in the next step of the, of the process. There's then loss of a pyruvate to, and an ammonium ion to produce the uh, homocysteine. And homocysteine was the molecule, we remember, that, whose concentration is a problem in the production of uh, cysteine. And finally, methylation of the homocysteine by an N5-methylfolate creates methionine. This was the reaction that I described in the other lecture that requires vitamin B12. There are other ways of making methionine. Homocysteine, as we've seen, can be converted to methionine by the alternate pathway that I'm going to show you here. Now, this, is, this pathway is another way of getting a methyl group onto homocysteine. The difference between homocysteine and methionine is that methyl group. So glycine betaine uh, is the source of the methyl group here. It combines with homocysteine to make dimethylcysteine and methionine. So we can see that a methyl group has transferred from the glycine betaine onto the homocysteine to make methionine. The enzyme catalyzing this reaction is betaine homocysteine methyltransferase. And the reaction here occurs in the liver. We see the transfer of the methyl group as occurs right here. Now, methionine is modified in bacteria before it is put into making proteins. We remember in bacterial translation that the very first amino acid that makes it into proteins is not methionine, but a modified form of it. And that's known as formyl methionine. So this set of reactions I'm going to show you shows how that formyl methionine is made. Like the synthesis of selenocysteine, formyl methionine is made by modifying a methionine that's on a transfer RNA. This is shown in this set of reactions. Methionine combines first with its initiator tRNA that's used to put it into uh, the proteins during the process of translation. This produces the, methyl, the methionine uh, joined to the tRNA. And in the reaction that makes formula methionine, we see that the um, formula group actually comes from 10 formula tetrahydrofolate and produces the formulated methionine uh, on the uh, transfer RNA. The product of that reaction makes tetrahydrofolate and the enzyme catalyzing it is methionyl tRNA formyl transferase. The next amino acid metabolism we will consider is that of threonine. Threonine's metabolism overlaps a bit with methionine metabolism. The first three steps of the synthesis of threonine from aspartate are the same as the first three steps in the synthesis of methionine. The aspartate is converted to aspartyl beta-phosphate by a phosphorylation. The aspartyl beta-phosphate is converted to beta-aspartate semialdehyde by, uh, an oxi by a reduction. And the uh, homoserine is created from the last intermediate uh, by a reduction as well. These three steps also happen in the synthesis of methionine. In the next step of the process, homoserine is phosphorylated to make phosphohomoserine using energy from ATP. And then phosphohomoserine is dephosphorylated, and that dephosphorylation involves a molecular rearrangement, that molecular rearrangement producing threonine. Lysine is made in also another set of very complicated reactions. The first two reactions are the same as threonine and methionine metabolism. There are a total of nine steps. I'm not going to step you through all of those here because they're not really relevant or needed for us to understand what's happening in the process. Lysine is one of the most post-translationally modified amino acids, and we'll talk about that at the end of this set of lectures. It's very important for that the modifications that happen to lysine allow for so many things to happen in cells. The hydroxylation of lysine, we've seen in another lecture, is important for making strong collagen. And a deficiency of one of the enzymes in the lysine pathway, an alpha amino adipic uh, semialdehyde synthase, leads to hyperlysinemia. And hyperlysinemia leads to accumulation of lysine in the blood, which has some very uh, severe consequences. Mm -hmm.